Embraer takes flight in Florida. The number three aircraft maker launching a new engineering and technology center in Melbourne, creating about 200 jobs. Joining us now on the set is Gary uh, Spulak, Embraer president of North American. It's great to see you. Thank you for coming see in this too. morning. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so we actually had a little bit of a debate this morning just now, in fact, about why companies decide uh, to do business in different states and uh, not just different states, but around the world. Uh, you decided uh, to do business in Florida and Melbourne. Um, the question then is why? Well, Andrew, actually, our headquarters uh, were founded in 1979, located in Fort Lauderdale. That's where I'm based. So our, our, our history in Florida goes back a considerable ways, and we know the state very well. Um, what's happening in Brevard County is, uh, is an initiative that we took on uh, a few years ago where we decided to move uh, the assembly, some of the assembly for the Phenom 100 and the Phenom 300 to the United States. Um, we did a study of about 20 states. We narrowed, the, uh, in, in terms of trying to develop a site, uh, we narrowed that down to uh, six, uh, three states and six sites. Three of those six sites were in the state of Florida. Um, it's, it was an industrial uh, uh, operation. So who, who, else was on the, who else was on the list? Who were the finalists? See, that, that's, uh, that's proprietary information. <laughs> okay. Okay. Proprietary, but I will tell you that they were East Coast-centric and Gulf. Uh, do, do this then. Without South. saying, tell tell us about the process. The governor was talking about how he makes calls, for example, the hedge fund managers, right. uh, trying to get them to come to come there. Tell us about the process. You said you were down to three different three different states, and then three three different locations in Florida. So those were the, the right. top six. What happened? How does it work? What what's what's the process? Yeah. So the, there's actually it's a it's a pretty complicated process because you have to evaluate a number of different factors and weigh them, uh, depending on the operating requirements of the project. So you, you basically have, and we have done this a lot, over the last five years, we've done probably seven or eight economic development projects, expansions in the United States and different states. And, and you weigh each one of the factors. What, what, what other states have gotten your business? Uh, Tennessee, Connecticut, Arizona, Minneapolis, Kentucky, and of course, Florida. Okay, so if you were to weight the, the sort of top three issues that are in your mind when you decide to do a project like this, they are what? So, obviously, the availability of a skilled labor force for us is very important. Um, the, type of, the type of jobs that we create, the type of work that we do, lends itself to high-tech jobs. Um, also, uh, you know, a pro-business and cl uh, climate in the state is very important for us. Um, and also, uh, other factors like uh, expedited permitting um, and, and things that help us get a quick start. Is there, any, is, there, is there a state that you thought you'd go into and then you had a conversation with uh, either the governor or somebody else and said, you know what, this isn't going to work for us? No. As a matter of fact, most of the detailed work that we do is advanced work where they don't really know who we are. And only when we're really sure and we have a really good uh, probability that that's a place that we want to go, we would then uh, come in and, uh, and how, announce ourselves. How, how important are taxes? Um, obviously, you know, the... From a, from, a, from a business perspective, um, the state of Florida, of course, is important because, you know, from a tax perspective because it has a favorable environment there. Um, it's not an overriding factor. It's one of the factors. Obviously, the three factors that I mentioned before, skilled labor, pro-business uh, climate. And for us, we do a lot of greed field expansion. So the availability, availability of land and for us at airports is important and the, you know, and the, and the room to expand. Right. You're investing in America, too. I mean, you're a company that's building things right here in, in our country. What, do you get, what advantages do you get from that, and where do you see this country right now in terms of the economy, what's happening? So in, in the case of the Phenom 100 and 300, which are two executive jet products that we've just moved some of the assembly to Melbourne and Brevard County mm -hmm. in Florida, um, this brings the process closer to our customers. It allows them to come and visit the, um, the facilities where the aircraft are being made. In the case of the Phenom 100 and 300, uh, and actually for the case of Melbourne itself, we actually have a customer center where customers will come from all over the world mm -hmm. to, uh, to design uh, the interiors of the aircraft, the paint schemes. Um, this creates a multiplier effect in the community because they come, they, they uh, rent cars, they stay in hotels, they eat in restaurants. So it's good for the local economy itself. In the case of Florida uh, and in Brevard County, um, with the retirement of the space shuttle, there is an, an abundance of talent there that's available. Mm -hmm. um, engineers, uh, assemblers, 
that we have examined and, and we feel lend themselves very well to the type of work that we want to do there, mm -hmm. um, both from an assembly perspective and now with the new announcement for an engineering and technology center to staff that with the, uh, with the engineers that we need to make that work. What do orders look like right now and what does that tell you about the strength of the economy here in the United States? Well, in terms of, uh, let's look at it from, from each perspective, from a commercial jet perspective, um, we see opportunities. Um, both here in the United States and abroad. Mm -hmm. On executive jets, the, uh, the market is still recovering here in the United States. But again, opportunities in Latin America, Asia Pacific. And, um, and so the sustainment of the assembly lines for us obviously is important. And we think the Florida solution you know, is one part of that. How, how much damage was done by the fallout from the financial crisis and uh, people looking askance at private jets, at executive jets? Just like all the other uh, manufacturers, uh, we were affected uh, also. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we see the market in the United States being key for us. That's why we're here. That's why we're, we're president making airplanes here. And we believe in the market, and we believe in the recovery of that market. And you're picking up market share right now. All right, you're doing well as, com as compared to your competition. Well, uh, on the commercial jet side, for sure, um, we're the leader in the market up to 120 seats. Mm -hmm. Um, on the executive jet, on the executive jet side, we um, we obviously are right in there um, and with our products. We have modern products. The Phenom 100 and 300 are modern. Uh, we're coming out with two new executive jets: the the Legacy 450 and 500, and we have the Legacy 600 and 650 in the lineage also in our portfolio. Bombardier or whatever. Right. Bombardier is that's your competitor for for commercial. Bombardier. 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 Huh? They're actually we? competitors for us on the commercial and the executive jets. And side. the executive jet. Yeah. Right. I like those little Embraer jets. They're easy to get on. They, you, you don't, you know, if you're on a big jet. It takes it, you almost driving out to where you take off takes as long as a flight. A lot of times, those little ones they go right out. They take right off. They don't take very long to put the people on, get them off. They're great exactly. for short for short haul. Right? Constantly on an Embraer on on the east. I'm glad coast. to hear that. Yeah. Um, Gary, thanks for coming in. Well, what are you going to flying back uh, to Florida on? Where am I flying back? One of our customers, of course, JetBlue. Okay. Oh, very nice, very nice. Gary, thanks so much. You can watch CNBC. You can watch CNBC on JetBlue. Absolutely. Please do. <laughs> we'll do.